So hello everyone, my name is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we're having a little look at what I carry around to do my sketching. Now you can probably recognise this, I've done a video on it before and it's um, actually a children's sketching box from Ikea. Um, it will link to it up on my website um, just as an affiliate link um, but it's a very cheap box so directly from Ikea it's somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds. You can also get it off Amazon for around the £15 mark as well. And what it is, it's very lightweight and, and really easy to use box. So it's got a zip, it opens, it's got this little bit here that you can attach your paintings to so you can have your thing on an angle and, and still be able to paint outside. Um, and in the last video I only just started using it so quite a few months ago now but I was enjoying it. So I thought I would update you on how I've modified it and how I'm still using it and the sort of pros and cons that I've found in my time to experiment. So if we just have a look at the outside, obviously I've not done anything here to the, the front. We've just got this nice um, hard surface and it's very hard so we can easily fit a, uh, a painting there and press and sketch and draw and no problems. So for example, this is a bit of um, nine by six inch paper and it fits very easily. Equally, you can sketch you know, something about A4 on this and there's no problem. An A4 bit of paper or a sketchbook will easily fit in this area. Now, one thing I like doing sometimes when I'm out about, or even sketching at home, is to take a tripod and be able to just put something up there so I don't have to bend over and sketch on my lap. I can sketch nice and stood up. And so what I've done is I've got a quick release plate in the back here and I've literally um, bolted it on. So I've just taken a drill and drilled through the, the layers um, and then added two little bolts. And we'll have a look on the inside. The reason for two bolts is it means it, it's stable, it, it can't rotate anymore. Um, has this been entirely successful? Well, it's it's been fine. I've used it quite a few times like this. The disadvantage is this back is um, not as stiff. And obviously with all this um, sort of fabric closure that we've got around here, and where the zips are and things like that, um, it's, it's loose. So when you are drawing on a tripod with this attached, it can wobble around a little bit. So it's not the fully authentic experience, but it is a pretty good, um, cheap, uh, idea. It's something I've enjoyed doing and it means I don't have to carry around lots of different bits. I can just take my one super light tripod. Now the other bit that you can see here is I've added um, sewn on a, a strap. So if we look up here we can see a couple of points where I've just sewn on a simple strap and all that means is now look I can carry it around which is fantastic. So it can just go over my shoulder very easy to carry around and just makes it a lot more of a mobile thing than before. The The box itself only has this strap. So the only thing the box comes with is this little carry strap. That leaves you sort of wandering around holding it. Whereas now you can just chuck it over your shoulder. And then on the inside, let's have a little look. Now inside, there is loads of room for absolutely everything that I could need. Um, as you can see, um, on one side here, we've got lots of room for lots of pens and brushes and things. Um, and I'll talk you through what I've got in here in more detail. And on the other side, we've got a big container and I've actually got two sketchbooks, or rather I've got a watercolour block um, and a sort of trusty A5 moleskin sketchbook. And this is the watercolour block. This is also actually moleskin um, and it's rather nice. Um, it's the same as what I showed you here. These sketches were all done utilising this box. So it does work um, and I've been using it like this for several months. Um, anyway, let's just talk you through exactly what is going on inside this box. Well, I've got um, two different water brushes. So I've got these ones by Pentel. Uh, these water brushes are sort of round um, so they just got a, a normal tip and I've got a sort of a, what they call fine and a, a large one here. Um, advantage of, you can see I fill them in water already. Um, and so when I'm sketching, I can easily do two or three sketches just with one brush with the amount of water in there. It's easily enough for a couple of sketches. 
obviously I need a tissue or something to clean the brush, but other than that, they are good to go. The other thing I've got in are some brushes um, which I actually found in uh, Romania when we were on holiday there last year. And I picked these up because they've got lovely flat ends. So uh, I've now got three sizes of flat uh, brush, which I think is really great for particularly things like direct watercolour sketching and that kind of thing. Again, there are links to the brushes, not the flat brushes, because I've never seen them in the UK, but the pencil brushes, there's links and things on my website if you want to find out a bit more about them. Then I've got my trusty pens. So up here you can see this is a Lamy uh, All-Star. This is a Platinum Preppy. If you unzip here, we can get out my watercolours. Um, I've got a couple more Lamy Safari pens. I've got a Pentel brush pen, lovely for um, adding finishing touches to watercolour paintings. Um, and I've got a, a Faber-Castell uh, mechanical pencil. And the advantage of this is it also has its rubber on the back. You can squizzle it around and get a nice little rubber. And that's all I really need. So I've got the reason I've got so many pens is um, I've just got different inks in each of them. So I've got a carbon black ink, and then I've got a black and a brown water soluble ink. And then the Platinum Preppy also has some carbon black ink. So it has a slightly different nib, different feel, and that's so I don't need to carry around ink. If one pen runs out, I've always got the other pen as well. The watercolours are the same ones you'll have seen me use all the time on my channel. It's a lovely little palette, 14 colours in there. Um, it's got a thumb loop, so if I do want to just carry the palette, say I've put this up, this whole box is on a tripod, I can loop it around my thumb, just like so, and we can carry it and we can paint from within. I've done a few videos actually about my colours, um, so if you want to know more about these, um, I'll pop a link in the comments below so you can find the appropriate video. Now the last bits, of course, are the, the papers. So this is a moleskin sketchbook. This is not a watercolour sketchbook. This is just a normal art sketchbook. Um, and the reason I've got it is because I wanted to try not using watercolour paper and see the different feel it gave me. And I'm just going through at the moment, filling it up with lots of, you know, the standard sketches. If you've seen my channel, you've probably seen a lot of these sketches, but really loose and sort of simple, easy sketching. And I found this paper um, actually quite nice to use. The one thing I don't like about it is um, when I've sketched somewhere in the book, often the, the paper, all the pages seem to get a bit more moist. Not that you can sense it to touch, but when you try and sketch with a fine line, the paper's very absorbent, and all the pages, after one or two sketches, all the pages seem to just only produce bold lines. So I think this is a fun experiment, but probably not one I'll repeat when I've filled up this sketchbook. Now, the other thing in here is this watercolour block. Um, this is again moleskin, this time it's um, watercolour paper. It's, I believe, 300 grams per square metre, so good sort of normal consistency. It's 30 cent cotton, so it's not the highest quality paper, but I found it rather lovely to sketch on, actually. Now, one thing I don't like is that already this, this gummed block, so block is something which is gummed, on all sides, that means you can just carry it around. It doesn't come loose. Brilliant, because you can clip it on the front of the box and just sketch and move and it doesn't matter, it's gonna stay still. Um, also means it doesn't buckle as much, unlike a, uh, a pad where you have all the sides loose except one. Here they're all together, so you can see. It's like taping your paper down very effectively. Um, but it's come loose from its backing, which is a little frustrating. It's fine, I mean, I'm still using it, but it would be nice if it could stay securely in the backing a little bit longer. And that's everything I'm using. The last bit, I suppose, is to note, this is where I put these little bolts in. So it's not, you know, super pretty, but it's it's fine. It does exactly what I want it to do. Um, and it was a really simple process. It probably took a couple of minutes. And I'm sure there's a cleverer solution if you want to think about it. I know at least a couple of other people after the last video have tried out a Mala, um, this is called an Ikea Mala sketching box and had fun with it. So if you fancy it, do have a go. It's such a cheap investment that if you're looking for a shade box or a sketching box or something, you know, 
and you want to try out the concept, then do try this first for 10 to 15 pounds versus many of them are hundreds of pounds. Um, so there you go. That is everything I'm using for sketching at the moment and my own little personal modifications that I've made to fulfill exactly what I want. Hope you've enjoyed that. As I said repeatedly, <laughs> um, everything in here is listed on my website and there are affiliate links. So if you click and purchase, I get a little bit, but don't feel the need to purchase from those links. A lot of them are Amazon. Um, and that's just because that is the easiest place to direct people to show exactly what I'm talking about. But obviously do support your local retailers as well. Um, and thank you very much for watching. Here's a bit that needs to touch.